Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, I'm in Sri Lanka. We are going to a Vedda tribe village. And the Vedda are an indigenous group from native to Sri Lanka. Uh, we are gonna go to the village, we're gonna learn about the culture, we are gonna experience the culture. They've arranged to cook local. This is as native, as local Sri Lankan food as possible from the land. So it's gonna be a journey, it's gonna be a learning opportunity, it's, it's gonna be extremely special. Uh, I'm gonna share the culture, the food, the entire experience with you in this video. bends down the side of the mountain, uh, but it's so lush, it's so tropical. That's an amazing road. Okay, we made it. Good morning, Rosaina. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Awesome. What is the name of the... Are we in, we're in a small town, close to a small town, right? Yeah, this is called Sorabura Baba. Whoa. Just like a five minute walk to get to the lake, to get to the boat, and then we're gonna take a boat ride from here to get closer to the village before we need to take another walk to get to the actual village. Beautiful to be here early in the morning. It's still so quiet, so peaceful, not much people, not many people at all. Oh. <laughs> Paddle boats are the best because it's so peaceful, it's so quiet. You just see the ripples of the glassy lake. We are just pulling up to the other side of the lake and just the view, it's so peaceful, it's so quiet. I love how the trees just come out of the water. The grass, it's so jungly, it's so lush. Oh, there's a tree going up there, but yeah, what a spectacular ride. We made it to the other side. We're gonna then hike into the village. The greenery, the lushness, the, the wetness, it's just spectacular. And it's actually like, as now, it's not so remote. There's still tuk-tuks, there's still motorbikes. Um, there are small villages and homes every now and then, but it's so peaceful, it's so serene. You see the birds, I just saw a flying peacock. I don't think I've ever seen a flying peacock. Wild peacock. It started raining. Okay, maybe we're just gonna take cover quickly right here. Hello, hello. Does it matter? Oh, some tea. Oh, I think you do want one. Oh, it's always perfect when it starts raining and the nearest covering is a tea house, a tea stall. So we're gonna have a quick, use this opportunity to have a quick cup of tea. What do you call it? A tea, tea, tea. Supernatural. <laughs> the cane, the jaggery? Yeah, it's supernatural. Or the tea? Both. Both. So you just drink a cup of tea, yeah. and then you, you sip on the tea, and then you alternate with yeah. the... Sweet okay, I gotta try that. Just take a little nibble. Oh yeah, that's sweet, but you taste like the grainy. Like molassesy. <sighs> okay. What is your name? Can you see yourself? He's so fascinated. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Estuti. Estuti. Bye bye. Okay, just a very quick rain. We're back on the road. And feeling great, that tea was some, refreshing. yeah, very refreshing, even though it was hot and like, yeah, that cools you.
Hello, thank you. <laughs> Still there. Nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> Oh. This is amazing. Oh. Wow. And I'm just drenched in sweat. The humidity has really come out. Cool. Thank you, Rosanna. He is one of the oldest members from the tribe. Uh, and then some of his children and some of his, the, the people in the village have, have started growing crops in this area, have started to um, more build schools, there's doctors, there's small clinics, uh, but the older generation is still living traditionally, still lots of hunting and gathering for sustenance. This is, yeah, this is a learning experience, a cultural experience. We've had a warm welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Stepping into the family hut now. Uh, all made from mud and then there's yeah there's wood inside the back is the the kitchen hut where they are cooking she has the fire going she's cooking uh, something uh, but then you can see the whole rack where they dry wood where they dry meat uh, they eat a lot of game meat a lot of um, that's a, the, the method of preserving the food um, let's go take a look what's in the pot Okay, it's corn rice. I've never had it wow. before. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> She's boiling some corn. There's some corn and beans and looks like coconut and then there's like a vegetable stew. Um, yeah, it looks very like all natural, all fresh. It looks beautiful. Let's do this. Natural. Dara. Come <laughs> Calm the babies when they're crying. Ah, so he was like, so it's like a song for babies. Oh, okay. Some uncle was just showing us it's a like a traditional baby calming song. So he was using the axe just to rock the baby, like almost like a chant of a song. And now stepping outside, they've got some game meat uh, that they're also gonna cook. So they're getting ready to to chop it up. It is deer. <laughs> It's deer meat, uh, which they caught earlier in the morning, uh, and then it's already sectioned out because they share it with the community. Oh, deer fat. By the way, Ruzaina is also making a video, so go check out her video. She's going to be uh, covering the, the food, but then also taking it back to her kitchen to cook because she makes recipe videos. Oh, that's like a... Whoa. <laughs> 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 the head is the target. The head is the target of the. Wow. That aim. Okay. 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 <laughs> Looks like it could backfire so easily though because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you kind of got to shoot it sideways. Ah, okay, you got to hold it. Hold it like this. And I'm sure you have to kind of shoot it to the side, otherwise it will like hit the wood, bounce back at your face. I won't... Oh, I can see. Okay. Oh! <laughs> yes, I did hit the... <laughs> okay, wait one more time. Ah, okay, angle it. Here we go. Okay, that went like 10 feet in there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, we better go see what's gonna happen with that deer. 
In the kitchen, she's making some roti, which is made from uh, millet flour, and she mixed in water, and I think that's it. The oils of the banana leaf keep it hydrated, keep it moist so that it doesn't stick. Uh, that's just like, looks solid and thick and hearty. Now. <laughs> and right in the kitchen also is the the betel nut refilling station so it's a little they have the betel nut they have the leaves they have uh, they also put lime I'm gonna try just the betel nut he's shaving one for me uh, with the leaf but not the not the lime because the lime can really like burn your burn your gums it's dirty ball it up Set. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. He's awesome, yeah. I like the taste, though. It's like chalky or bakerish and like woody. It really makes your mouth water, but then at the same time, your mouth is like dry at the same time. That, that doesn't really make sense, but it's true. <coughs> how's the how's the beetle chewing, Rosanna? So, I'm feeling the same thing. I don't know what's happening to my mouth right now. <laughs> so she's gonna make the fresh meat. Um, chopping up some garlic, some oh. onions are going in, there's going to be some spices. Oh, the curry leaves. Nice. First she fried up some spices. Um, with the curry leaves. It's so fragrant. This entire hut is just filled with delicious aromas. But then in the deer meat, she added more spices. She added uh, sea salt flakes. She added turmeric chili. She added pepper. She added curry powder. Uh, mixed that around and then poured that into the oil curry paste already. That smells unbelievably delicious. That's going to be great. And then lots of spices for the, the gaminess of that meat as well. Bye. Bye. Here, and he's gonna show us how to dig out uh, one of the yams, which is also a traditional food that they eat. I have never come across. That is huge. I think it's pretty big size. That's big. That's, and I think they're gonna boil that to eat as well. I just want to ask Uncle a couple of questions, maybe about the the tribe, about how long his family has been here. Um, but we're gonna need like three sets of translation. Hmm. Hmm. Veda, that's all like indigenous Sri Lankan groups, right? Yeah. But then they have specific tribes. Yeah, they have the specific tribes. Yeah, Mona. What he's saying is that like in other countries that they don't have like a lot of like sections for their tribes. So they're coming from one type of one bloodline sort of. Mm. So and it's called Uruwarge. So it's from the pig, like Ura is pig. So it's from a pig tribe, like a... Ah, yeah. Okay. So traditionally the, the tribe would be a hunter-gatherer society. Fish hunt, gather seasonal crops and produce, use the the lush land of Sri Lanka and live off the land. And so like the skills that they have, their expertise and their skill at living off the land, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, but it is not a easy, it's a tough life. And so lots of the younger generation has uh, started growing crops, have started um, more going to school to become educated, to get better jobs. Um, but it's still important to remember, important to reflect, important to, to acknowledge, to, to appreciate the elder generation. And it's such, this is so incredibly special. It's such an honor. This is a privilege just to be sitting next to uncle. This is a moment I will cherish and never forget. Thank you. How would you say thank you in in their lang language. Mama 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 I cannot I cannot catch that. I'm sorry. Mama Mama Ketchak Hondamai. Okay, that's that's how you say thank you. Mama Ketcha Kondamai. Mama Ketcha Kondamai. Mama Ketcha Kondamai. Thank you for having us. Mama Ketcha Kondamai. Mama Ketcha Kondamai.
<laughs> the same uh, millet, dry millet flour, but mixing it more into like a porridge, like a paste over the fire. <laughs> The cooking method, the preparation, and the, the starch, it looks so similar to some things that I've eaten in Ethiopia or across Africa. Like such a similar, so many similarities. Right out of the fire, she's molding them into balls. That's like, it's so burning hot. still kind of drizzling, but not too hard. So we're gonna try to eat outside. They've set all the food out on mats and banana leaves. Uh, the dishes are, some of them are simple, but it smells so good, so natural. The whole grains, the corn, the coconut, the deer curry is in the center. What you do is you just- Take the whole thing? Yeah, take the whole thing, and then uh -huh. you douse it with the gravy. Ah, okay. So He dished up one of these guys. Yeah. Maybe I'll- and this is sambal. Yeah, that looks great. The authentic one. And that's just pure chilies with it's nothing pure else. Chilies. Okay, pure chilies and maybe salt. salt in there. Yeah. Okay, it's like dough almost feeling. Um, you can squeeze in. I'm just gonna try that first. Just the the bean yeah, soup. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's so good. Yeah. Like the the grainy doughiness of the starch. But then that like gravy with the beans. It's delicious. And for this one I'll try the, the deer. A chunk of the deer. Oh wow. <laughs> the deer is amazing. It's not like the most tender meat that you'll have, but like it's so flavorful. And it's like it's not that tough. It's, it's not really tough? good. Not too tough. Okay. Wow. So flavorful though. She added in so much dry spice in there. Like, not necessarily too like chili spice, but like, it's like thick with dry spice. How do you get the sambal? Just it's okay? Yeah, just take okay. it. Okay, I'm gonna get some of the sambal. This is just pure, pure green chilies mm -hmm. into my bowl. Okay, next, next bite. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna just kind of mix everything now with the green chilies, with the deer, with the, with the beans. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sambal is awesome. Yeah, as you taste the vibrancy of the green chilies. And then this is the roti made with the, the millet flour as well. Just scoop it up with this himself. Yeah, with right? the deer. Okay. And the Mix it up with the deer, and the with the sambal, sambal, with the everything. It's good. It's so good. It's the same grain, but completely different texture. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there's beans in here though too, right? Yeah. Beans, beans corn, and coconut. coconut. Yeah. Some Thank more? you. Just reach in, it's okay? Yeah. That's okay. Fine. Thank you. And that's the yam that they just plucked out of the ground like 30 minutes ago. Ah, the chili is right in behind oh, you. Oh, <laughs> nice. Grab one and oh, oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I give you the herbal drink yesterday. What? No, no, we'll have it tonight. Even I'm going to have it. Yesterday. Awesome. It's like starchy, mm -hmm. starchy from the corn, starchy from the beans, but then refreshing and crisp from the coconut. This is the yam. Oh wow. Good. It's like a totally different texture. Mm -hmm. Almost like creamy. That's not, not like really starchy tasting. Kind of like lighter tasting. Like it's not overly spiced, it's not, but the sambal is wonderful. And they just showed us that the, the chilies come from this plant right here. Oh, oh, more chili up in there too. Oh, oh, the freshness of that. Oh, that's almost like green bean tasting until the spice hits you. Now everything is just kind of mixed with the sambal with the, with the beans and rice and the, oh no, the, the millet and the corn. Mm. And that deer curry is amazing. <laughs> wow. 
I'm loving it. The love in the food, the naturalness, the grains. Let's do it. You wanna do a chili? Yeah. One of the reasons Rosanna's so cool, <laughs> she's down to down to pop chilies. Oh yeah. Pop chili. Cheers. <laughs> They're so fragrant though. Yeah, it's really, really fragrant, but I'm waiting for the kick. How come that is hot? The sambal is spicier well, than the chilies, they, right? Maybe they chose the really hot ones before and now these are really young. Yeah. That one is a little bit spicy, but it's more like, it's more fragrant. It's more like, like almost citrusy, sour. Yeah. Mama, maka ketchup. Mama ketchup kondama. Mama ketchup kondamai. Mama ketchup kondamai. Mama ketchup kondamai. And we just asked Uncle how old he is. 73 years old. I thought he was like 50. Look how young his features are. Living off the land. Uh, yeah, it was an honor to be in his presence to share a meal with him. Even though we don't speak the same language. Even though we. I'm sure like our entire thought process and worldview is totally like opposite but just being able to share a presence to hang out with him to sit next to him uh, he is an amazing an amazing man thank you and have a little chili on it later <laughs> oh no oh, that's hot mmm I have so many childhood memories of this. This is one of my favorite snacks with that sambal. It's starchy, it's smoky, it's roasted. That's really good. The simpleness of the food, but everything prepared by hand, prepared with love, grown with their hands and then prepared. Um, the respect for the land and for Sri Lanka that they have, and this is, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yes. So we've all just finished lunch. We are going to line up for a quick photo outside of their home. And I'd say thank you to the entire family, to Auntie who cooked, to Uncle, an amazing cook. Thank you so much. This has been a, an incredible, memorable experience. So I want to say thank you to Auntie for cooking. Everybody. S30. 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 Mama S30. 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 It's hard to even process the entire experience and then to put it in words. But all I can say is that that was incredibly special. It was a privilege to have an opportunity to meet, uh, to learn from the wisdom, from the lifestyle, from the, the generosity of the Veda tribe and the people that we met. They were so welcoming. They had never really done anything like this before and they showed hospitality. What always touches my heart in situations like that is even when you cannot communicate verbally, you can still communicate uh, with your actions, with your, your feelings, with the general like feel of everything. And so if you can just hang out, if you can genuinely appreciate the food, if you can smile, if you can make gestures of positivity. That's what really comes through and that's what, those are the memories that last. Those are the, the, the people are just amazing. And that's, that's one of those situations, the food. I loved the food. I loved how it was home cooked. I loved how everybody shared, has a graciously shared that meal with us. Uh, but it was the people, the community, the sharing. That's what really stood out. And so I wanna say a huge thank you to the entire village uh, for hosting us. And especially a massive thank you to Rizena. She organized everything. Uh, go check her out. She is the minority taste. She has such a passion and a love for people, for Sri Lanka, for food. Finally, I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, and by the way, subscribe and click the little bell icon. And also check out this entire Sri Lanka series. There's, we're traveling through Sri Lanka. 
eating lots of incredibly delicious food, meeting people along the way. So make sure you watch the entire series if you haven't already. I'll have all the links in the description box. Uh, thank you again for watching. I will see you on the next video to, actually right now, we're continuing on to the other side, to the east coast of Sri Lanka.